Hello everyone, I am Rohit from Talent Battle. In this video, we will be discussing some previously asked technical MCQ questions for the Deloitte hiring process. So let's begin with the actual content. First question. Use the code segment below to answer the question that follows. They have provided us the code line by line. K is equals to 18. Then for loop will start from J equals to 1 to 5. Then inside the loop we have an if condition where the value of K will be checked greater than 10. And line 5 is empty here. So if the code above is executed and the resulting value of K is 10. Which of the following statements must have been on line number 5? So important here is our resultant value should be K10. So we have to cross check which particular option like K equals to K minus 1 or K minus 4, K minus 3 or K minus 6 will be suitable here at line number 5 so that at the end of the particular code segment my value of k will be 10 so if you see the analysis here the value of k is initialized to 18 then we enter into a loop which will execute five times for the value j is equals to 1 to 5 and in every iteration it is going to check the condition that k is greater than 10 so if we check every option one by one so in first option my k value is getting decremented by one so it will be like 17 in the first attempt then 16 then 15 like this so if you see the condition will be true and five times my loop will iterate still the k value will be greater than 10 so for the first option when the loop will terminate it will going to print 13 as an output but this is not the expected one we want 10 so we can discard option a if you go with option b like k is equals to k minus 4 so if you check every iteration here from j 1 to 5 initially the k value will be 18 as the condition is true and if i put k is equals to k minus 4 so my value will be 18 minus 4 that equals to 14 in the second iteration when my j value will become 2 where my k is equals to 14 so new k will be 14 minus 4 that equals to 10 then j will be 3 and k is equals to 10 at this moment so condition will be false because 10 is not greater than 10 so for j equals to 4 and j equals to 5 the value of k will remain same and that is 10 which is expected so if i replace line number 5 with k equals to k minus 4 it will give me 10 as an final resulting value so we'll cross check for other options also if i replace k equals to k minus 3 right so it will be 18 minus 3 in the first attempt that is 15 then it will be 15 minus 3 in the second attempt which is again greater than 10 right so that will be 12 in next attempt it will be 12 minus 3 which is 9 which is not going to satisfy the condition but the value of k will become 9 which is not expected so at the end if i replace k equals to k minus 3 it is going to print me 9 and same logic if i apply for k equals to k minus 6 it is going to print 6 so as per the expected resulting value, the second option k equals to k minus 4 should be replaced here at line number 5. So my correct option for this question is option B. So I hope it is clear to everyone. Let's move on to the next question. What will be the result of the code below? Value variable is initialized to 4. Shift variable is initialized to 2. And we are calculating value based on the bitwise operators. This is shift operators, left shift and right shift. And the expected output will be either 2, 0, 4 and 6. 
so let's calculate it step by step once you analyze the code you need to understand how the values are initialized and which kind of expression we have to execute okay so according to the given code my value variable is initialized to 4 my shift variable is initialized to 2 as the bitwise operators they are utilizing so the operations will happen on the binary places so first is value is equals to value right shift by 1 and then left shift by the current shift value so if we separate out this expression and separately we calculate so right shift value by 1 so my value will become 4 right shift by 1 which will give me 2 then the second operation left shift as the variable name is shift so don't get confused with the same name I am just shifting it on the left side the result I am shifting right result by shift value of 2 right so my new value will be 2 left shift by 2 that will give me 8 so you have to shift the bits right so I have binary operations you are clear with and you are directly calculating it okay so in the first case I got value 2 in the second case I got value is equals to 8 now my next statement value right shift equals to shift variable value right shift by 1 so if you take right shift by 1 this calculations will be 2 right shift by 1 which results into 1 and then we have to perform the right shift of a value variable by the new shift value that we have calculated so my new value will be 8 that is what the recent value we have calculated and right shift it by 1 so it will give me 4 and then we are just printing the variable value so the final output should be 4 here right so option C is correct 4 so you have to focus on bitwise operators for this particular question and particularly the left shift and right shift operators moving towards the next question theoretical question a systematic way of storing information into the database which one query report form or none of the above now this is a little bit of tricky question because if you see to store the information in a systematic manner if you go with the formatting then form is the relevant format which matches actually but you need to understand here storing information in a database is not captured by the specific terms that they have used like query then report or form instead of that it actually involves the management of the data organization of the data within the database and that is not directly represented by query report or form either so option d is more relevant here that is none of the above because if you see a database is nothing but an organized repository of related information which is stored in a particular manner with the help of which we can easily access the data we can manage the data we can update the data so the designing of a database for a systematic storage or retrieval or any kind of modification that we are doing that will be in a single place in electronic format so therefore the none of the above is the most appropriate option which can be considered as the process of storing information because query report or form is not encapsulated by these terms whenever you are working on a storing of information into a database the query option or say report option or the form options are accurate but storing information in a database is not represented by these terms this is the main important line here instead the process of storing information involves organization and management of the data right so we will go with the option d none of the above so there is a slight change okay how you are trying to consider the context of the question got my point moving ahead with the next question algorithm is given to us what will be the output of the algorithm given below 
first initialization of array then i variable and j variable array is also given to us set array is equals to some elements are there then i value is initialized to 10 and j value is initialized to 3 so let's prepare an array for this arr Two, one, four, five, seven, six, three, eight, nine, and one more element is there zero. So if I write down the indices zero, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, total ten elements. Okay, where i is equals to two and j is equals to three. This is the initialization what they have already provided to us now. What is the next step in the algorithm? Repeat step number 4 and 5 while the condition says i is greater than j. Currently it is greater, 10 is greater than 3. Okay. So what we have to do? We have to print the element array of index i minus 1. i is 10, so 10 minus 1 that will be 9. So in the first iteration of execution of this inside the while loop, first iteration Focus on the values, i is equals to 10 and j equals to 3. So I am going to print array of 10 minus 1, that is array of 9. Which element is represented if this is my output? At array of 9, 0 is represented at the index 9. So output will be 0 in this case. Then next statement is we have to update the value of i equals to i divided by 2. So if I update the value of i equals to i divided by 2, that means i equals to current value is 10, 10 divided by 2. That means i will become 5. Now second iteration, condition check, i is 5 and j equals to 3. So i is still greater than j. So it will print array of 5 minus 1 that means array of 4 which element is at array of 4 7 is at present at array of 4 index so 7 will be printed then you again update the i i equals to i minus 2 that means 5 minus 2 which leads to 2 and now if you see the third iteration where you check the condition i is 2 and j is 3 which is false means i is not greater than j so it will stop the execution and exit from the loop so what is on the output screen 0 and 7 so option d is correctly matching with the output values that we have got this is how you can solve the questions okay so fundamental logic flow execution, loop understanding, array indices, retrieval of the data. These are some basic fundamental things that you know, then easily you can solve these questions. Moving ahead with the next question. A testing which allows developers to run the same test over and over again using different values is called J unit testing, parameterized testing, beta testing or usability testing. So if you see the context of the question, we are repeating the test again and again, but we are using different values every time. So by this context, parameterized testing is exactly matching with the question. So I will be selecting option B, but we should be very clear about other options also. Okay. So this is conceptual question, theoretical question. The testing method which allows developers to run the same test again and again using the different values is actually a parameterized testing. What actually happens in this kind of testing, we always check for the test cases and we execute them multiple times with different input values so that we want to ensure my code is getting executed correctly under different scenarios. Now if we talk about other options that they have provided, the first one is J unit testing. Now if you are working with the testing domain, you should have this idea that JUnit is actually a framework. It's a popular open source testing framework for Java. And it is used to write and run the repeatable test. But JUnit itself is not a specific type of testing. 
it is commonly associated with unit testing where we uh, used to test the individual units or individual components of a particular application in separate manner isolated manner then beta testing is another type of user acceptance testing which involves like uh, multiple release versions of a particular software product we are providing and the purpose is to take the feedback from the consumers then identify the defects then assessment of the overall quality of your application before it is getting uh, released to the final general public right so and actually it is conducted in a real world environment and feedback from the beta testers is used to make the improvements then usability testing is another type of testing where we focus on the evaluation or evaluating is done on the basis of user interface and how the overall user experiences so we always ask participant to complete the particular task and the observer is in the listen mode or taking notes so that we can identify if there is any usability issue during the navigation from one point of application to another point or any kind of unclear instructions are there or the user is facing any difficulty in completing that particular task then the usability testing comes so if you see all the options that whatever i have explained in the context option b is exactly matching with the provided question context so parameterized testing is the answer for this question moving ahead what will be the return value of the function given below for the name of the function is cal and the parameters are 39 and 65 so we have a function call here with two parameter values if you see the code function is accepting two values n1 and n2 in the body we are checking an if condition we are returning it so it's a recursive call with the parameter change otherwise else block will return n1 and we have to predict the output of this code so if you focus on the entire logical execution what kind of logic they have actually implemented here if the value of n2 is not equals to 0 till it reaches which is my base condition here i am calling the function again with the replacement of parameter n2 will become n1 and new n2 will be calculated based on n1 modulus n2 so this is actually a recursive function which is calculating gcd greatest common divisor of the two numbers and they are using here euclidean algorithm okay so let's see how the function calls are getting executed so first you call the function with the value 39 and 65 right so my n1 is initially 39 then n2 is initially 65 now you check the if condition that 65 is not equals to 0 which is true you will go inside and you will again call the same function in a recursive manner where my parameters will become n2 what is n2 here 65 so my parameters will become function call with 65 and n1 modulus n2 which is 39 modulus 65 39 modulus 65 which results into 39 got it again you check the same condition now this time my 39 is n2 and this one is n1 so my call is 65 comma 39 which will again call the same recursive call because n2 is still not equals to 0 right so we will be calling the cal function with the updated value that is 39 and the n1 modulus n2 that is 65 modulus 39 right so that comes out to be 26 then again change this is my n1 now this is my n2 again which is not equals to 0 so this results into a new call of the function that is 26 will be the first parameter and 39 modulus 26 will be 30 so this is my the recent call of the function 26 comma 30 now this will become my n1 and this is my n2 next i am again calling the function because n2 is still not equals to 0 so i will return call to the 13 comma 26 modulus 13 will recently give me 0 right 26 modulus 13 will be 0 and now see n2 has become 0 due to this particular condition so what it is returning n1 what is n1 13 so final output should be 
option C is correct. So if you have worked through GCD example or if you have understood how exactly the recursive call works and the logic what they have given here, easily you can figure out the answer. So I have just figured out all the recursive calls which are being calculated based on the given logic and then finally we reach to the base condition. This is my base condition. Okay, so final output for this will be option C, 13. Even you can cross check it by converting this logic into the program part and then by passing 39 and 65 as a parameter value, you will get the same output. Moving ahead to the next question. Again related to the testing, which of the given testing is used to check if the individual module of a source code, important word individual module, is working properly without fail which of the testing is matching with this so i think in the previous question i have given a little bit of information about this type of testing also okay so whenever you are checking an individual module of a particular source code unit testing right unit testing is the method where we check the individual units or components of a particular application in isolation we check that the purpose or agenda is to ensure that every unit is working in a correct manner. So it verifies the behavior of the smallest part of your application. Every function, every method, then uh, what kind of development you have performed during each and every phase, all these things are identified and if there is any defect, that defect will also get fixed. If you talk about system testing, the other options, why we are discarding them because they are not matching with the context. So system testing is a type of testing where we evaluate the overall functionality, not individual module. Okay. And the performance is on a basis of fully integrated system. Then integration testing is again the phase actually of a software testing where individual modules are combined and tested as a group. So no individual module separately being tested here. Beta I have explained, right? It's a pre-release kind of version of software product and users and the customer feedback is taken into consideration. So to check the individual module of a source code, the most appropriate method is unit testing. So option C is correct here. Okay. Moving ahead. Which of the chart type given in the option is also called as the spider chart in MS PowerPoint. So if it is again a theoretical conceptual question, if you have used this application of PowerPoint, you will be aware about how the spider chart looks like and how it works. Okay, so options are pie chart, radar chart, bubble chart and dognut. So the answer is radar, option B. You can just cross check it, how exactly the spider chart looks. So radar charts are also called as spider charts because the representation is like a web of a spider. And we use these charts for comparison of several entities. We are working with multiple dimensions. Right. So if you go to the PowerPoint application, there will be a chart type called as radar, which is again used to the creation of similar spider charts where you can showcase your multiple data sets in a very clear way of understanding. Right. If you talk about other options like pie chart is again a circular graphical representation, which is divided into slices where we normally go with numerical proportions and we used to show the relative size of different categories in a data set. In bubble chart, where we displace the three dimensions of data, where the two dimensions are the scatter plot kind of representation and the third dimension is the size of the bubble. The donut chart is a variation in a pie chart where the hole is present in the center. It looks like a donut and it exactly similar to pie chart, but the appearance is different, right? So we use uh, different size of parameters or different categories of data sets and there we use this kind of representation right so option b is the correct one which is matching with the context then next question which one of the given storage device is used in cloud architecture so basics of cloud computing understanding the architecture that will help you to solve this question so the options are file storage and flash jump drive then block storage device and flash jump file storage with zip disk and the last option is block storage and file storage. Now if you see the architecture part now the question is like which one of the given storage device is used in cloud architecture. So if you see architecture basically works on block devices it, because it is a raw storage and file devices are used for shared file systems. 
means the matching answer will be block storage device and file storage device which is option d if we use this type of storage because we want to deal with architecture now so at the level of architecture raw storage is commonly utilized in the environments of cloud because high performance storage is required for applications so we normally use them for databases and other kind of transactional applications and so block storage are highly flexible and we can manage them as per our specific requirements then second category comes that is file storage because it's a combination of two two things every option now for level cloud environment level so that's why it is well suited for unstructured type of data right so that's why i'm going with option d 